says, listen, I can be like the most high. He's the king of pride. He is a parasite that feeds on life. He is a, a parasite that feeds on life in his attempt to corrupt all of life, all of God's creation. That's his, that's what he wants to do. He cares for nothing but to inflict injury, destruction on all of God's creation. That's what he wants to do. As a matter of fact, his goal is to obstruct, to impede, to limit, to confuse, and to deceive the world about the true knowledge of God and his word. That's Satan's goal. And what pride does is it causes us to serve his purposes. Here's some of his purposes. His purposes are not faithfulness. But what? I bet you're thinking unfaithfulness, right? But friends, faithfulness is actually putting God's word word to practice, to getting up and doing something about it, to, to putting away this in my life that's impeding and hindering me. Faithfulness is actually getting up. So the opposite of faithfulness, if you look at it, the Bible addresses it, laziness, right? Laziness. Some of you may be saying, oh, I'm a hard worker, man. You can't call me lazy. You know, I'm, I'm not. Work. God can call you lazy if, if time after time you say, God, can't you see that I just don't have time for that. I've got this going on. I've got that going on. My priorities are all out of whack, God. Can't you see that? Why can't you just let me do what I want to do? Pride causes us to serve Satan's purposes. His purpose for your life is not faithfulness. His purpose for your life is laziness. Okay? His purpose is not patience and long-suffering. But his purpose is strife and agitation. That's Satan's purposes. His purposes are not peace, but strife. His purposes are not mercy and extending mercy and grace. Now his, his purposes are to be critical and hurtful. His purposes, ladies and gentlemen, is not to unify. His purposes are not unity, but what? Division to divide. Right? That's his purposes. So one reason to put away pride in the battle of David is because the king of pride, the Lord of it, is Satan. And if we serve that, who are we serving? Right? Reason number two to put away pride in the battle of David is that it brings the discipline of God. You know, Hebrews 12 talks about this. God disciplines his children. He disciplines those whom he loves. I love my children. I love Isaac. I, I enjoy seeing him ride his little uh, power wheel gator thing out there around the yard. But it's one thing that I tell him every day when he gets on that thing. I plug a new battery in it for him and he goes riding that thing. And what is it, girl? I say, don't go where? Don't go to the road. You, you know, he's got a tree. He knows. He's not supposed to go past a certain tree. Why? Because I just hate the boy and I don't want him to have fun? No, because what happens if he rides that thing out on the road? And here comes a car going about, you know, 62 or 3 miles an hour, right? That won't be a good scene. And if I catch him going past a certain tree on his little gator, Guess what I had to do before in the past? I had to discipline him. I had to take it away from him for a day or two. I had to give the little boy a spanking. I know that's not politically correct this day and time, but that's what I had to do. I had to correct his behavior. I had to get his attention. Does that mean I'm a mean daddy? No. Friends, sometimes God has to discipline us to get our attention. Why? Because he loves you. The conduit of God's discipline is brokenness. Does that excite you to be broken? I like what David Jeremiah says. He says this, God arranges circumstances, timing, and selects tools which break us. Yet some will continue to resist and hang on to things 
they think bring joy and persist in relationships that stunt spiritual growth. Taking the path of least resistance and hope that God will bless their laziness. My friends, that is not the road to spiritual maturity. Brokenness hurts. The Bible, however, proclaims that it hurts far more not to be broken. Don't be distracted by short-term pleasure. Look where your Father is leading you and let Him do whatever it takes to get you there. A good reason to battle pride daily is not only that Satan is the king of it, he's the king of pride, but it brings the discipline of God. Don't be fooled by time, friend. Don't be fooled by it. And number three, it has consequences in the future. Now, I'm not talking about the future next week. I'm not talking about the future next year. I'm talking about the future. The future that we've been studying on Sunday night. This glorious, wonderful future where uh, Matthew 6, 2 Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 7, Matthew 25, Luke 19, all these talk about these rewards and these giving up certain responsibilities according to our faithfulness in this life. Not only that, a consequence in the future, you know, if, if I, you know, being a, a pastor would do something terribly great, and the police would have to come, I'm not great, but bad, and the police would have to come and arrest me and take my mug shot, and it would be on Wavy 10 News, and everybody would be like, oh my goodness, what in the world? A terrible consequence to pay. Beyond being in jail, right, would be to have to look at look my little girls in the face, to stand before them, and to get down on their level and say, guys, daddy messed up bad. That's a bad consequence. But you know what? In the future, you and I, all believers in Christ will have to stand and look straight into the face of Jesus and explain why we told God over and over, I can't do that, God. You see, God, don't you understand that you'll have to look into the face of King Jesus himself and explain that. I would say that's a good reason for me to pray God. So how do I do this? Number one, resist the devil. Not the Holy Spirit. Don't resist the Holy Spirit. I'm going to stand up and, and counsel everyone today. Do not resist the Holy Spirit of God when he speaks to you. Resist the devil. James 4, 7 says if you resist him, what will he do? He'll flee. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Pride says, don't you. Don't do that. Pride says, listen, you need to put a few limits on God. He's intruding too much into your life. Resist the devil. Not the Holy Spirit. Number two. Strengthen your conscience. That mechanism, that gift that God has given us to hear his voice our conscience. Strengthen it with truth. Okay? With truth. Train your mind to recognize sin, to recognize pride. Exercise our spiritual muscles because, you know, it's not going to just pop in your head. You're not just going to wake up one day and start beginning to understand spiritual truth. You have to train your conscience and train your mind and get into God's Word and have it go over and over. Engage yourself in special studies that zero in on life, that zero in on certain things in God, that zero in on certain subjects and topics. Engage your mind. Train yourself to be able to recognize. Be on you pray with me, God. There are many here today who are struggling with this gangrene 
this terrible disease of pride. God, I include myself in that. And friend, I'm going to ask you today as Go before God now. Would you be so bold as to ask Him to help you to recognize it, to, to help you to discipline yourself, to train yourself? Would you do that? Would you ask God to help you to resist the king of pride, Satan, the parasite that feeds on life, whose only goal is to obstruct, impede, limit, confuse, and deceive you? Would you ask the Lord to help you to resist him? And friend, this is a tough one. Would you ask God? When you try to explain to him, God, can't you see that Billy Clark, would you, would you ask God, would you ask him to discipline you? To correct that thinking? Would you ask God to help you because you, you don't want to face the consequences in the future? Yes, it'll be great to be in heaven, to be with Jesus. That would be the greatest part of it. But as we're learning on Sunday night, there's a lot more to it than what we've ever been taught about what your word says. God, none of us in this room want to look into your face and have to explain how over and over and over, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, we just continue to say, God, can't you see that I just don't have time for that? It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Living for Jesus, 282 is what we'll stand.